Today I want to pick on C++ and talk about why I think it's a language that can be really rough on beginning programmers. A while back I made a video about languages and in that video I gave C++ a hard time. I basically said it's a fine language for experienced programmers but I don't recommend it for beginners. A lot of you since then have contacted me to defend C++'s honor and to convince me that it's a really great language and I should use it instead of C and how dare you criticize C++. Thank you for trying to help me see the error of my ways. I know it means you care. And that means a lot. But today I want to clarify my position. But first off, before we get too far into it, I'm really interested to see where you're all coming from. I'd love to know what your first programming language was. So if you don't mind mentioning it down in the comments, that would be great. I'll also stick my first programming language down in the comments in case you're curious. Okay, so now to clarify my position, because some of you out there misunderstood me. Let me be perfectly clear. C++ is a solid language. It's a great language. I use it myself. It definitely has a place in my collection of languages. I recommend it to people all the time in certain situations, specifically situations where you need low level control and high performance and you want object oriented features or other features that C just doesn't have because C is a little limited. So yes, I recommend C++. I recommend people use C++, but I recommend C++ for experienced developers, people who have at least a decent idea what they're doing before they get into it. And this last part really is the key. My beef with C++ is not what it does to experienced programmers or what it enables, but what it does to beginners. And there are a lot of different examples I could show. Today, I just wanted to show you one that I think illustrates one of my concerns. Because it's easy to gripe about a language and talk about it abstractly, but I thought today would get more concrete and actually jump into the code and look at a concrete example. Okay, so every new programmer starts with Hello World. And here's the C version. And about two steps down the road, we start to introduce variables. So we might do something like this and show that you can print something out that wasn't in this original string literal. So you could do something like this. Nothing too complicated, but this version does bring up some concerns. We've got pointers, we've got arrays, we've got strings. There's a conversation to be had here. And if you haven't had it, I do have a video that discusses the relationship between pointers and arrays. And of course, in C, strings are just arrays of characters. So once you understand how pointers and arrays work, typically strings are pretty simple. So there is a little speed bump with this example, but it's not usually too bad. And this is a good opportunity to really try to understand pointers and arrays. And if you do that, then you're off to a really great start with C. Okay, so now let's switch over and look at C++. Now, of course, this looks the same, right? And it is. We usually think of C++ as a superset of C, meaning that whatever we can do in C, we can also do in C++. But that's not always exactly the case. And you're also going to realize that C++ can be a little opinionated. And we can see this when we try to compile this program. So when we compile it, you notice that it works. Like we can run this, it's, it works just fine. We get hello world, but we get a warning saying, hey, this is assigning a string literal to a character pointer and that is deprecated. Deprecated just means we don't do that anymore. We don't think that's a good idea. And new programmers often just don't understand what this is saying. One way to interpret this warning is that in our opinion, you should stop doing that C style string nonsense, even though it is a totally reasonable thing to do. But the real reason why this gives a warning is that in C, a string literal is an array of characters or array of char. And in C++, it's a constant constant array of char. So these string literals are actually different types. Now, in either case, you're not allowed to change the characters in a string literal. That's not okay. So I guess the change to constant does make sense. And now you're converting from a constant character pointer to a normal character pointer. And the compiler is telling you that's a type safety issue, which is really kind of funny because type safety in C and C++, I mean, what a concept. It's definitely not one of their strong suits. But anyway, I'm a new programmer. I'm just trying to get my program to work. I can get rid of this by either making the pointer a const pointer like this, or I can cast my character pointer here to just a character pointer. So I'm basically casting away the const. In either case, now we can compile it and it's quiet. That, that shuts up the warning. And our program still works fine, but most teachers of C++ at this point will tell their students, don't do it that way. We've moved on. We're going to use C out, not printf. And we're going to use strings. So something like this. So something like this will work just the same. And when we run it, we get hello world just like before. So really at this point, it's potato, potato. We haven't really seen a significant difference. We can bring in strings like this. 
and say something else. And let's let's make it emphatic here. And I'm going to make this S1. So we have string one and string two. Um, we're using the standard namespace, so I want to make sure I don't forget that. And now we can make two different versions. So let's have S1 and S2. I'm keeping the old C style string in there just so that you can see the comparison, see that both of these work. If we come down here and compile again. Now you notice, okay, we're getting two printouts, but I mean, things haven't changed. We're basically able to use this character pointer the same way we use a string. It all looks the same, right? So the beginning programmer is going, this is really cool. And if we want, we can also do something like this. We can concatenate with our little plus sign here, do something like this. If we want to make them, you know, we want to stick two strings together. Oh, whoops, sorry, that's not what I meant to do. I wanted to do these in opposite order, okay. Sorry, this will do what I wanted to do, which is you can see we can we can add the character pointer to the string or we can add the string to the character pointer. And so this kind of looks magical. And people will say that this is more C++ y or more idiomatic C++. And I'm still not really sure what that means. I guess it means that the C++ community has decided that they prefer strings and C out and C in rather than printf and C style strings. And that's okay. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you have strings and C strings and they behave very similarly. The strings have more bells and whistles like a built-in length method, which is really Really cool, but at this point they seem interchangeable, right? I can concatenate, I can use them just like each other, and that's really sweet because we couldn't do that in C. But wait, 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 Professor, I thought we couldn't change the characters in S1. Well, yes, that's right, and we're not, but well, what's happening here is part of a longer conversation that you'll have later on. Okay, as a student, I guess I'll trust you. What other choice do I have? But what if I do this? What if we make a third C style string. I'm going to call this S3 and maybe we will say this is going to be Jacob. And now say that I want to come down here and I want to concatenate that with S1. And now at this point, the little red squiggle shows up, which is telling me I've got an error. If I try to compile it, well, we got a problem, invalid operands to binary expression, because it turns out that you can't add these two things. And the student might ask why. I can add a string to a character pointer and a character pointer to a string, and of course a string to a string, but you start trying to string two character pointers together and you have a problem. Now, why is that? And the reason is simple. Actually, it's not. It's not simple, at least not for a new programmer who's just getting started. When a freshman asks about this, you're like, that's a long conversation about classes, objects, and operator overloading, which we're not gonna touch until the end of the semester or maybe even next semester if you're in your very first class. So for now, just use C++ strings. And sadly, the student of C++ has now learned a sad lesson. The student has learned not to explore, not to try out new things because it's gonna end badly, and instead just to wait until you're told the rest of the story. And in my personal opinion, that's not how we should be doing things. I want my students to explore. I want them to try new things. I don't want them just taking everything I say on faith and assuming that they can't understand what's going on. And I know my students are gonna to have to take some things on faith. I can't explain everything to them on day one. That's just not practical. But as much as possible, I want my students to have a simple set of tools that they can at least at some level understand and play with and at least at some level understand what they're doing. Now, some of you will say at this point, but what about Java? And yes, Java is guilty of some of this too. In some ways, Java's Hello World is even worse. It's got more object-oriented nonsense in it. Class, public, static. And for this reason, I don't really love Java as a new programmer language either. But at least Java is upfront about it. At least you can see public and static and you can say, okay, those are new words and I'll understand that later. But in C++, it's like, ooh, simple, magical stuff just works and then bang mysterious error that my professor can't hope to explain clearly in less than three or four hours and maybe longer. So that is one big reason why I'm not so much of a C++ fan when it comes to beginning programmers. There are other reasons those are going to have to wait for future videos. Like this one if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel. If you wanna make sure you don't miss future videos, check out my other videos for more programming topics, especially those that get you under the hood and help you really understand what you're doing. And until next time, I'll see you later.